Okay, so hello everyone. So today we'll be, we are going to be discussing uh, chapter 10 uh, of the Mastering Shining book, uh, which is about uh, dynamic uh, UI. So basically before now we have been working, uh, uh, we have been working on seeing how we can just uh, build the UI uh, or shiny app uh, using a static code in which we always uh, write before we initialize uh, the shiny app. So, but today we'll be looking at uh, how we can really, how we can really uh, modify the components of the UI using uh, code that is run in the server parts uh, of the shiny app. So that is uh, basically uh, the idea about uh, dynamic uh, user interface. Uh, in shiny so so for the introduction part so i think if you look we look through the book uh the way we are like the asking uh what is dynamic user interface which is just uh the summary in which what i've just given so the dynamic user interface in shiny basically is for as we are interacting with the app we still want as the user initializes the app we can modify some uh, key inputs in this in the UI using a uh, code that is run in the server part of the shiny app. So uh, that is uh, basically on for every input in the UI. Okay, there is always an update uh, family of function in which we can use to modify that input uh, that is uh, that we are seeing in the user UI parts of the shiny app. So. So for this first part is talk about updating the inputs in the shiny app. So, and they, they said there are three, three key techniques for creating the dynamic user interface in shiny. First, uh, we have the update functions. We have, uh, we also have the tab set panel in order for us to use in modifying the tab set in the UI. Uh, we also have the UI outputs and also the render UI. So these are the three parts in which we'll be looking at uh, as we go through uh, this book uh, today. So in this first part, okay, we all, just as I said that every user interface, okay, we, we always have several inputs and those inputs we can modify uh, those inputs uh, using code that is running the server part of the shiny app. So there, there is just an example here where we have a, a initial UI code, in which we are always familiar with, we have UI, we're going to have loop page. We are going to have uh, ID inputs, which can be several inputs. It can be select inputs. It can be slider inputs. It can be numeric inputs. It can be uh, uh, action buttons. So these are all inputs in the Shiny app. So as we, in which we define all these inputs before uh, we start uh, the Shiny app. So, but each of these inputs, we can, we can modify all each of these inputs in the server part of the Shiny apps. That is after the app has been start initialized. So what is the observe event doing? Observe event is simply, uh, is simply, is going to monitor all the inputs, uh, in which we have defined in the UI. So because each of those inputs, they have, they have a, they have an ID tag. So because we are going to uh, we are going to make reference to each of those ID within this observe event. So once as a UI uh, as a user is interacting with the app as they make key changes into this app, so it's going to trigger uh, the updates uh, family of function. Uh, say, oh look, this input has been modified by the UI. Then the update uh, function is going to ensure that that input is automatically uh, updated. Well, it's going to make sure that input is automatically updated. So that is just basically the, the idea behind this. So what is the update function doing? So the update function allows you to modify the control after it has been created with a series of uh, uh, ID inputs and update ID input as shown below. So what do we have here? We have we have ID inputs, which can be like text inputs. So for us to update it, it's gonna be updates text inputs, which is specified within 
within the server. Okay, we have numeric inputs, okay, which is defined in the in the UI. So we are going to have updates, updates numeric inputs uh, within the server. We can have select inputs, okay. So we are going to use update select inputs. We can have slider inputs. We are going to use updates as uh, slider inputs. Let me just show one example here. In this example, I think we start the UI here. In the UI, we have slider inputs, input ID, uh, the label, the minimum, zero, default value is zero. They have minimum of minus 10, maximum of what 10. We also have a slider inputs. Uh, we have X2, the label is X2, default value is zero, minimum is minus 10, maximum of 10. We also have slider input X3. We also have action button. We have reset. The label is gonna be reset. So when I run this, uh, within the server part of this uh, shiny app, we have what we, we have defined an observe event. Here we have input dollar sign reset, which is making reference to the action button. Is what I specify here in the reset. Then I use this coli only then I close it here. So here we have update slider inputs, okay? Within the observe slider inputs, I will make reference to this. Input ID is gonna be X1, then the value, initial value will be zero. Then we have update slider inputs, input ID is gonna, I use X2 and the default value is zero. We also have update slider inputs, input ID, it's gonna be X3, then value is zero. So when we run this, okay, we can modify, we can check the app. Okay, so these are the slider for X1. We can make changes, we can make changes, we can make changes, and then we click on reset. So once we click on reset, it's gonna tell the shiny app, yeah, look, this guy has been, this slider has been updated. So if this slider has been updated, it's going to ensure that, uh, it's going to go, it's going to make sure that those, the same code in which we run, every, all those inputs in which we have supplied, is going to make sure that those inputs, they are automatically updated in the user interface. I don't know if there is any question before I proceed. Hello. Hello, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, no, no comments. Okay, thank you. So this part talk about hierarchical freezing and circular references. So maybe there are some times in which as we uh, think this, they discuss uh, this in the main chapter of the book, in the main book. So there are some times in which as we are, the user is interacting uh, with the app, maybe as they are selecting different things. So there's some points in which uh, the app might get complex because there are a lot of uh, reactive component that is running at the back end. So, uh, and they do recommend that, that it's always useful, uh, it's always useful for us to always freeze uh, this, uh, the, our reactive uh, value in the apps to avoid unusual uh, computation. Here we can have the ID inputs, which might be table outputs, uh, we have observe events and update ID inputs, which is going to ensure that if the user modify any input in the app, it's going to get updated at once. So we have ID inputs, some, some outputs. So we have freeze. Uh, so in that case, we are going to make use of the freeze uh, reactive value, which is freezing the input and updates uh, the input. So yeah, they did not, okay. They did not uh, specify. 
far. Let's see the movement and discourse. Yeah, yep. All right, let's go select boxes. I don't want to look at these. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is where the discourse phrasing reactive value. Okay, here we have the UI, root page, select data sets. Okay, we have pressure and cast. We have select. Okay, this is where the discourse. So we have data sets, make it so be reactive. Then observe events, inputs, dollars, and data sets. Update select inputs. Okay. So here we will see that once we, once we, once uh, for us to, uh, let's see the behavior of this before we come to that. Let's see the behavior. So we have this. Yes. Problems, yeah. What is the problem? Ah, uh, yeah, I understand. The problem is the UI. You are doesn't match with what you are using because it's same. Okay, you have data set in as an input okay, pressure, pressure and gas is coming from the data set package. Ah, uh, wait, 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 wait. Select inputs, pressure and cast. Wait, 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 let's see. The summary function. Is there, do you have summary function also in the fluid page? Uh -huh. 
Yeah, you have it. You said the summary function is what? No, it, it's okay. Maybe, um, try to copy the name. You have two M's. And what do you have in choices? You have data. It looks okay, really. Because I specify the package here. The yeah, package, and that's it. That's it. Try to copy so, the, the code again from the book again. So create a new R script and copy in a fresh R script they call. Let me copy everything. Let's uh, create a new one better. Maybe double head. Uh, create a new one script. A new R script. Yeah, a new R script. Use Chinese app to, to set up maybe the. Yeah, the library. Let me start a new session. What was the problem before? No, it's uh, weird. Yeah, maybe the session, you know, is it like that? Maybe I have loaded another package, so there's maybe namespace conflicts. So I think we want to say, let's say we select a new data for your class, for your distance. What is working fine? Speed. It's working fine. Distance. Class pressure. You can try to copy the in the in the book. It said I have another example. I copy and paste that because the glints, the problem that you want to show, is I didn't see it. I tried to replicate. And I didn't see the the problem. If you go uh, to the book. Yeah, below is a link. Uh, a little yes, bit below. No, yeah, yes, yes. Like no, no, not that. Because it's, it's the same. A little okay. Below. No, it's another yes. one. It's a, a link to GitHub. Or maybe, let me try to show in the chat. Is, I see, uh, I can see it here. The first one, yeah, copy, copy the link. Uh, let me share. Let us send. Uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, that one, the GitHub one. GitHub.com. You can copy that that call from the app screen. Yes. Yeah. It's an example the same, but when you change the data set, in that case, 
you will see a, a little a, a short error. If you remove the freeze value, yeah, yeah, but a, a new script was to to keep clear. And instead of using the file name, use the web, you can create a new variable. So you can go back to the GitHub. But you don't, you don't have the, the file in your, or you can download the file, the CSV. Yeah, you need to download the file, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can put it in the in your project repository. And go back, yeah, to the dashboard. Mm -hmm, dashboard. For the and download the CSV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or I can copy the link. Mm, I think not a link. You need to click. If you want to copy the link? Click over the data. Right. Click over the data. Uh, and then copy the link. And then go to row. No, no, the, the yeah, row. Go, go to row, yeah. Do you see the row also? Yes. You, you need to access to that first before using the link. Yeah, because the, the row will give you the, the correct format. Yeah, click over row. You need the row, yeah. Mm -hmm. You see it on the right? Click, click over row right there. Mm -hmm. Click on, and now you can copy the link once it's up, it appears. Right. What, no, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet, not yet. <laughs> yeah. Now okay, you can. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, because you need the raw the raw format. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, the the GitHub page with all right. the right. You know the HTML, <laughs> and now you can run the app. There you go. There in you the go. source, maybe source bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. You can select, pick select these. customer, pick and pick one of the number row. Numbers, yep. So if if you remove the, so but when somebody select mistakenly select and everything is done, everything freezes in the app. Uh -huh. Yeah, until you select the customer. Until you don't select the customer that you want to check. Exactly. All right. Select the number. So maybe that is why they were saying we have to use freeze uh, reactive value to ensure even though you select this, I think it must still display some other information about the customer. Because now, maybe as I'm working with this, I mistakenly click any. You can see the whole value is done to end it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Say Japan. Saka Sabana. Collect any number. So just keep it a bit. Oh, save. Copy this. Yeah, so what? Yeah. 
there was an example I want to talk about temperature, temperature. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. there is an example here about temperature. So we can have slider inputs, uh, input ID, the label, uh, the default value means starting value 21, minimum is 19 and maximum is uh, 25. So we can use the action button to reset. Maybe as the user is interacting with the app, they can choose to select a, a new slider inputs. So here we are using observe events. Observe events is just watching through as the user is working with the app. If they select any other value, uh, if, because the starting value is 21, so if the user select any other value, so what observe events in because we didn't observe in there, we specify inputs dollar sign reset, which we are calling the action button. Uh within observe event because we want to use the action button to update uh, the slider input. So for the slider input here, we have input ID, which is gonna be the temperature, then the value is gonna be 21 because uh the default slider input value. Uh, for this app uh, is the default uh, slider input value is 21. So maybe if the user select a, a new value other than 21, so we can easily use the, we can easily update that using the action button in the app. So let's see that. So we have the UI, I have the server, and I have the start the app. So maybe I select a new value, say uh, my temperature, I select 23, then I just reset. So it's just going to update, make sure, make sure that that input is being updated in which I've selected, I can select a new value. Uh, let's say it's 22 uh, updates, so it's going to update that if it looks uh, for me. Uh, so, dynamic uh, visibility. So, yeah, uh, also, these also techniques uh, that discuss that this also technique is also very useful. Uh, uh, for tab set panel because in, we can have uh, tabs, multiple different tab set panel and as the user is working with the app, we don't want them to see all the different, all the tab uh, at once in the app. So we can turn off some certain tabs with, within this app. Uh, but uh, the this is just one technique in which they talk about in the book. They say if you want to really uh, take this up to make it more sophisticated, more advanced. That means they recommend that we need to learn HTML and CSS in order for us to do a more advanced uh, customization of the tab set uh, panel. So here we have the tab set panel. So we are going to have updates uh, tab set panel, which we are going to use to update uh, that tab. So we have a simple app here. UI, which is a float page. We have the sidebar labels, sidebar panels, select input, which is controller, show, choices, might be plots, and also summary. Okay. So for the main panel, uh, we have tab set panel, ID, which is going to be switcher, then type is hidden. Then we have tab panel body, we have plots, plots, we have that panel body summary and summary. So those are the two tabs in which we have. So for the server side, uh, it's still our normal code. So the only difference here is here, what we call the observe events. We have input dollar sign uh, controller, controller which we have already defined here uh, in the app. So input dollar sign uh, controller, we have to use update tab set panel. We have input ID, which is switcher, then selected is gonna be input dollar sign controller. So we we use we can use uh these techniques 
uh, we can use these techniques uh, to show uh, specific tabs in which uh, we want to show in the shiny app. So let me see this in action. You are, we have server. Uh -huh. So yeah, what I have here is plots. So so yeah, we all can we can also have summary. You can see uh here is always showing. Is only showing the summary. If we have result for summary, it's going to display the result here. Show, uh, we want to show plots. So if we have plots, so it's going to display the output for the plots. It's going to display the output for the plots. So let's see. So let's see this. Outs. Outputs dollar sign plots render render plots gg plots so That's uh, what's in this iris. Let's do this. Let's see. I know you can write the rent the output function inside of the instead of the plot in the switcher UI. Because you, you render it, but no, no, I think it was in a good position. It was okay before because you create the output. The point is that you are not pointing the output in the UI. So I don't know in the, in the, uh -huh, inside the body, instead of, of, of the plot, uh, you say that panel body, the second plot, the one that the capital, yeah, I think that. In that place, that should have you should have the the output plot uh, uh, plot output I think function. Okay, you mean I should put the app the code here? No, not there. No, no. In in the in the plot that was with capital letter, in the because you need to point to the out plot output. I think it's the function. Because basically already... you are creating it, but you are you are not putting the plot inside the, the, the panel that you are adding. This is the code. So you connect uh, to the to the UI. It's, con it's connected to the UI. The UI the ID is plots. No, but that's not an ID. You are not passing plot ID to an a phone to the 
to the output function of the plot because the let me maybe I can find the the output is let's try this plot. Uh, I mean, you said the plot output function. You need to call the plot output function in the UI to see the plot. Okay, 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 okay. Because you are rendering, and yeah, Chinese have asked, but you are not taking that. Output ID. Is lots exactly because it's not any of the options. It's like I think this word, like the switch, switch function, as you don't have any. You see, uh, go 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 to the UI. You say that you have tab panel body, then you have the plot word. In the second plot word, I think that's where you should place the plot output function. Okay. In the yeah, in the second plot. No, no, inside. I think inside the body, the panel body. Plus. No, you you remove the the the, the plot that you you have. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Take that plot output, and that should go to the to the second inside instead of the second plot. Yeah. And remove the yeah the before and the comma. Mm -hmm. The comma and the plot work. You say there's error. No, because you are you eliminate the, the parentheses. Yeah, mm -hmm. keep the parentheses. And instead of you you keep you kept the plot word. I think you should remove it. Because basically that's what is returning the that cell panel body. No, no, no. Right. The ID is okay. <laughs> keep the ID. Yeah, is is the so plot in parentheses. Uh, Exactly. Remove it and that one. Let's see it works. Mm -hmm. And maybe the, the yeah, it works. Uh... Cross fingers. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> nice one. Nice one. <laughs> Yeah, great. Now, now we have. <laughs> yeah, now we have something. <laughs> Shiny. <laughs> yeah. No, that's incredible. <laughs> so maybe we can just maybe we can have multiple tab in which you want to show several results. I think this is uh -huh. this techniques. Uh, if since we are not very good, uh, don't know much of HTML or CSS. In which we can use to customize uh, uh, the tab sets. So we can use, they recommend we can go with these techniques, which is very nice. So the user just click to see, uh, uh, but on other techniques, I think it still has to do with the HTML is accordion dropdown, which is also very useful. When we have multiple dropdown, we can just do a dropdowns. And... You know, I'm wondering, all of me. If we, in the summary, what about yes. if you put a select input? Like a, instead of having summary, the summary word, having yeah. adding an option. So like, okay, you have a plot or you, I might ask you something else. Let, let's try to do it. I think that should also work in my, you don't need to render anything because it's an, it's an input function. Oh, you know, outputs. No. No. Dollar sign at in summary. Let's say render prints. Okay. 
You want to grab a summary? Render prints a summary of iris. Okay, so once a summary of iris, so we come here also to the UI, uh, do the same thing. Instead of the summary with the, yeah, with the capital would be. Uh, we remove a summary with the capital. Exactly, you, you need to remove it. It's like, bam. Uh, I think uh, summary out, uh, text outputs. It's not, it's like, come on, be a link. Uh, text then. output, output ID, the summary. Yeah. Yeah, I think that should work. Uh -huh. This works. Yeah, block. Yep. Also the summary. So, the summary is here. Okay, let's do it for just one column. I'll put dollar sign, separate lens. Yep. It works. So minimum the first quarter, the... but it's putting everything in a single line. Yeah, the point is that we are not using the various output function and looking for mm -hmm. what's the correct. Yeah, it, the, the point is that the the name for the it's a little bit tricky. It's bird but thing. I mean, right? Yeah, I have it. Let me write it here. Yeah, the bottom text, the bottom text output. Yeah. Outputs. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Instead of test output, you should use better than thing up and you will have a, a better a better result. To me, one of the trickiest. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah. We have plot. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can even do for the entire column. Correct. It's separate lens, separate with beta lens, and also species. Perfect. Exactly. That's the result that we want to see. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe these techniques we can have several other columns in our app so we can use these techniques so that the user will just focus uh, on the specific result in which uh, we want them uh, to see at that uh, particular time so let's go back because our time is fast spent uh, So that is the function of the switch page. We can switch between one, between pages in the app. Um, so this part is about, uh, talk about creating UI, creating UI with code. So, so how do we do that? So we have the UI of the, of the Shiny app. We have output, dollar sign numeric. So this we are using a, other techniques, which is us to do the render, uh, render UI, because we want to render the, the UI uh, within the server uh, part of the code. So we are we are running an if statement. If input dollars and type is equals to slider, then slider inputs the input ID, the label, the value, default value is zero, minimum is zero, maximum is hundred. Else it should be numeric inputs. Else it should be this uh this this code uh to be run if this is not true so else is gonna be this 
So we can use uh, these techniques uh, to build, uh, to develop uh, the UI parts of our Shiny app using the render uh, UI. But, uh, but in the book, I think they do discuss that these techniques, there are some time in which these techniques, uh, it, it's going to make uh, our codes to go slow because it's always, it's uh, all the, has to do with uh, reactive and you know, reactive, using reactive, it has to do with a lot of uh, dependencies. So as we are starting this app, so all those uh, reactive need to run the reactive code in the background, which mm -hmm. items it's going to make uh, our app to go slow. So I think the, the advice, what we should always consider uh, things uh, before we, uh, implements uh, these techniques. I think they discuss uh, that in the main book, not in the notes. So we should always think uh, before we uh, implement uh, this technique, before deploying this app into our production, because at times it might make the app get to be more uh, complex because it, and which will take uh, us some time in order for us uh, to debug the app where, where we have issues. So I think uh, uh, in, I think that is just uh, the summary we have seen. We have seen how how we can update. Uh, we have seen how we can update the UI parts of the uh, of our app using codes using the observe events where we combine observe events uh, with the various inputs where we can which observe event is going to check if this input is updated by the UI. So it's going to ensure that uh, we update that input uh, uh, in which the UI has provided. So we, we also see another techniques and we can use the various uh, tab set panel uh, to, uh, to show the user specific tabs in which we want them to see as they are working uh, with the app. Uh, but in more advanced techniques, we need to use uh, HTML and CSS to to, in order for us to uh, design a more complex app. So the last, I think we look at how, how we can use uh, the render the render UI functions to, to update uh, the, the UI parts uh, of, the shiny, of the shiny app. I think uh, that is uh, all in which uh, I got. Great, uh, great presentation. Yeah, excellent, very good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So I think next week, I don't know who is up, it's like Sam Shudi. Uh, Olua Femi, should I end the, the recording? Yes, yes, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. It's not stop the keyword. Is it isn't isn't N? I thought it was N. I don't think it was N.